You've dreamed of building a family, but the journey hasn't been easy. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen, a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families every day. On our new podcast, Baby or Bust, we'll be learning from both reproductive experts and people who have faced challenges just like yours. Join us every week for Baby or Bust, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Make sure to follow us so you never miss an episode. What's the big deal, deal? Where can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just $5.99 each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand-tossed pizza and a marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, go! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's, too, where you can... Mix and match two or more. $5.99 each at Domino's. Two item minimum pan pizza, bone and wings, and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Hello and welcome back to the Sports Ethos DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Michael Patrio, here to break down this wonderful February 5th, Saturday, five-game slate that we have on our hands. So uh, another shout-out to Al Hunter for joining me yesterday, guys. If you haven't followed him, go follow him. Uh, he is one of the premier uh, DFS contributors around the business. And as you saw, I tried to get a couple other bodies on here some other names, some other minds uh, that we work with. And Al is a great dude, knows his stuff very well. Uh, But I'm riding solo. We got five games to talk about. Before we jump into anything, quick shout out to Thrive Fantasy. Guys, come prop up with us over there this NBA season. Thrive is the number one daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. With Thrive, you eliminate the countless hours of research and focus only on the top tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. Choose 10 of 20 available player prop bets to build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value for both the over and under, based on how likely it is to hit. Hit the most props, rack up the most points, and win your share of the prize pool. Thrive is over 50000 in guaranteed prizes weekly for the NBA. It has awarded over $6 million so far. Use promo code ETHOS, E-T-H-O-S, when you sign up and receive an instant 100% first deposit match on up to $100. That is instant. Key word there. You can find Thrive in the App Store, Play Store, or by visiting their website at www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop today. All right. We got five games to talk about on the main card. It's a pretty, pretty solid card. Nothing great about it. Not too many guys to worry about spending up on. Not crazy amount of value to start off the night. But as, thing, as we know, things, things change as the day goes on. We'll probably see some more open up. First game of the night, we have the Miami Heat. Traveling to Charlotte, taking on the Hornets. Charlotte is on the second half of a back-to-back, so no injury report for them. And then for the Heat, Jimmy Butler is probable. Caleb Martin is questionable, along with Max Struss and P.J. Tucker. And then we have Chris Silva, Victor Oladipo, KZ Akpala, Markeith Morris, all ruled out. We'll go to Vegas to see what we got looking for a game total. It is 225, three-and-a-half point spread being favored to Miami. This is going to be one of the premier games to target, I think, on the slate. There's a few that stand out, and then there's a few that will probably shy away from a little bit. But we'll start off here with Miami, as always, with the away team. Jimmy Butler coming in at 9-5. It's an expensive price tag to pay for Jimmy, but I don't mind it in this matchup. This is a premier matchup for a lot of these wings. Uh, Looking at Jimmy, he put up a solid 56 DK points on them earlier in the season in 36 minutes. Uh, It was a 32-point, 10-rebound game with five assists. Now, the, the assists... We know that they're going to go dipping down a little bit now that we know that, uh, you know, they got Kyle Lauer back in the lineup. He's not going to be handling the ball as much. But that just means that we'll probably see a lot of his scoring responsibility go right back to where it should have been. So I do like Jimmy. He's probably one of the only guys above 9K that I'm even looking at spending up on in this slate. Uh, He's probably my second favorite stud when it's all said and done. But listen, there's so many ways you can build. And using this Miami Heat team is going to be key because, frankly— all these guys are in play. Bam, he's expensive at 8-9, but this is a premier Bam matchup. Another guy that almost put up 60 DK points. We know that Charlotte just bleeds points to centers and bleeds points behind the three-point line. So uh, I don't mind looking at him. I don't mind looking at Lowry. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of worry. He only played 25 minutes in his first game back, but it was mostly conditioning-based. And you got to imagine that it's going to get bumped up uh, from 25. Now, whether he plays 35, that remains to be seen. But the, the dude took a lot of time off. He should be fresh as long as his cardio is there. 
Uh, and a guy that I think is worth taking shots on a GPP. So the price tag is way too cheap for this matchup. But just know that there's a little inherent risk in case he only gets bumped up to 28 or 30 minutes. But even then at 7K, he can easily pay that off. And then the only other guy I'm looking at is Tyler Hero, where despite whatever happens, if Lowry's minutes get uh, limited, then he's still probably going to play the same role regardless. Uh, he's usually going to always come off the bench, have a high usage off the bench, take plenty of shot attempts. I just talked about this matchup. It is absolutely fantastic. The dude put up 41 DK points in that last one without even hitting a three-pointer. Took 20 shots, and he's always going to be somewhere between 12 and 18 shots. Uh, he also had a great game against his team early in the year. Put up 42.5 DK points, but did so on spectacular shooting. But either way, 6,200. All four of those guys are very, very much in play. No doubt about it. On to the Charlotte side of the ball. Much different side of the ball. I don't like targeting the Heat with too many players. Uh, I was looking at Plumlee at 5,100, knowing the minutes he's been getting. But I don't like to target opposing centers going against Bam. You've probably heard me say that before in the past. I think Lamella at 93. Anytime he's under 10K, he's in consideration. But he's nothing more than a GPP pivot. I prefer Butler. And I prefer another high-priced stud that we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, the only guy that I could kind of consider would be Gordon Hayward because of the price tag. I think 5900 is a little too cheap for Hayward. Uh, the matchup's okay. It's nothing uh, fantastic. But he's probably the lone Hornet that I have a ton of interest in. Uh, if you wanted to go to Bridges, I wouldn't fault you there. But I think I just prefer Hayward at that price point, knowing that he's about almost $2,000 cheaper. We'll move on to the next game. Phoenix Suns traveling to Washington, taking on the Wizards. For the injury report, we'll start here with the Suns. We have Frank Kaminsky, Abdul Nader, Cameron Payne, Dario Sarge, Landry Shamet all rolled out. And then for the Wizards, we know that Bradley Beal will continue to miss the next two to three weeks with that wrist sprain. Uh, and then everybody else is good to go. Now, what does Vegas say about the game total? We're looking at a 223.5 game total. Phoenix being favored by 7.5 points. We'll start here with the Suns. Uh, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, it's a fantastic matchup for both of them. They're both expensive, 9-8 and 9-4, respectively. Uh, I prefer Jimmy, and that's the way I'm going to talk about this slate. There's this guy, if there's guys I prefer over him, it's just that simple, where it just kind of limits the player pool. It's a five-game slate. We're going to have to differentiate our way, uh, ourselves somewhere. And for me, it's kind of just sticking with my studs. Uh, I don't mind it if we want to go to these guys. I think they both have the upside. I think they both are fantastic floor players. I think it's a great matchup. Everything says, you know, you can play these guys. But... I think if you're looking at just the actual game total environment, all the things that come with it, this, the Phoenix Suns play one of the best defense. Their offense has been clicking. There's a good chance that this game could get out of hand with no Bradley Beal. Now, where they do come into play is if you're building multiple lineups and you're trying to pivot off of some chalk. Because I don't, I assume a lot of people are going to shy away from some of these Washington guys ever so slightly. And if you wanted to run it back with some body, sure. Now, the one guy I do have interest, though, is going to be DeAndre Ayton at 7,100. His minutes have been limited in the first two games that he's come back from this ankle injury, but he doesn't need heavy minutes against his team. They blew them out by 20 points the last time they faced. He only played 24 minutes and put up 36 DK points. It is a fantastic matchup. And now... You've dreamed of building a family, but the journey hasn't been easy. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen, a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families every day. On our new podcast, Baby or Bust, we'll be learning from both reproductive experts and people who have faced challenges just like yours. Join us every week for Baby or Bust, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Make sure to follow us so you never miss an episode. What's the big deal, deal? Where can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just $5.99 each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand-tossed pizza and a marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, go! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's, too, where you can... Mix and match two or more. Five ninety-nine each at Domino's. Two item minimum pan pizza, bone and wings, and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. They have all three of their centers back on Washington side of the ball. So there's there's no real continuity. It's just kind of going to be rolling around trying to get all these guys minutes. So I do like Aiton that the game happens to stay close. He still has plenty of upside. I mean, the game gets out of hand. We saw that he can get pay off that salary. If the game stays close. I, I feel like it's a near lock that he pays off that salary. So he's the one son that I see myself having some decent shares of. And if we wanted to try to save money and go with somewhere else, it would be Jay Crowder at 4K. Uh, with all the wings back, his minutes are going to be somewhat limited. But he played 34 against Atlanta, only put up 22 DK points. So the ceiling's probably 30. The floor is probably 18 to 20. And a 4K and a five-game slate, that's some rock-solid concrete value that we can go to. On the other side of the ball, I'm not really too interested in anybody. Again, 
If you're playing someone on Phoenix and you want to run it back, I think Kyle Kuzma is probably the best option. I wouldn't mind Dinwiddie. Both these guys should have increased usage. We've seen Kuzma kind of be on one of those heaters. It's ever since Beal's been out, and every, anytime Beal is out, he gets increased shot attempts where instead of seeing 11 to 14, he's seeing more of like that 17 to 20 range. Increases his floor. The rebounding's been up. Uh, he's actually been getting blocks in defensive stats, which isn't very Kuzma-like. So we're starting to see a higher floor Kuzma, and we know the ceiling is about 50 DK points. So wouldn't fault if you wanted to go there. If you have the money, sure, why not? It depends on how your build's going. And if you are playing Kuzma, you're probably going to want to run it back with one of those Phoenix guys on the other side of the ball. The ancillary play I'm looking at here is Montrezl Harrell. I mean, at 4500 it's a rock-solid price tag. A guy that just gives you a pretty safe floor and a decent ceiling. Nobody on in value has a crazy ceiling on this slate, not, at least not as I'm recording this. Uh, but given the fact that Thomas Bryant's back, I think everyone's going to kind of shy away from all three of these centers. And if there's one that has a secured role, it's going to be Montrezl Harrell. He's going to be playing at least 20 minutes. He's going to be playing with high usage, high energy, and be able to get the bench stats. And when we're looking at the game prior, uh, early in the year, put up about 28, 29 DK points in 25 minutes. Now, I expect more like the 20 to 24 minute range, but it's not too far off where you can still give us a 25 DK point return. And at 4,500, I do like that value. Third game of the night, New York Knicks traveling to L.A., taking on the Lakers here for the Lakers. Carmelo Anthony has been ruled out. LeBron James is doubtful. And then the regular bodies like Kendrick Nunn and Sekou are out as well. Anthony Davis is probable for the Knicks. It's Derek Rose. It's Lucas Samanich. Both of them ruled out. Now, we'll start off here with the Lakers. This game has a 2-12.5 game total. Lakers favored by only 1.5 points. I'm sorry. We'll start off with the Knicks. My flaw. Uh, Julius Randle coming in at 8,700. We just saw the rumblings and the news that Randall pretty much wants it out of New York. He said they're not utilizing him. He wants to be on a different team. He's going to be most likely traded or on, at least on the trade block with the deadline approaching. Now that can go one of two ways. That can mean they showcase it or they start to limit him and hope that he doesn't get hurt because they know they want him out of there. I'm kind of leaning the latter. I don't think they really need to showcase Randall. I think teams saw a full season of him being showcased to what his upside and what his role is now. So 8,700, I'm probably opting away from Randall. Now, granted, there is the narrative. He's going back to Los Angeles. He's going to be able to go against them. There's a lot of good things about this matchup. He put up 50 DK points on them earlier in the season. He's probably my favorite pivot spend up, where I prefer the guy on the other side of the ball that we'll get to, which is Davis. I prefer Jimmy Butler. But I probably prefer Randall over both of those Phoenix guys. I probably prefer Randall over LaMelo Ball. So he's right up there. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think I'm going to have the value to spend up on three studs. And he probably would be the third one just sitting on the outside. Now, the guys I could see myself spending on are a little riskier on this team. Evan Fournier, 5,600. If for some reason the usage is starting to shift away from Randall. Uh, we'd see Evan Fournier, who's been playing very well over the past three games. He has 240 DK point games or higher in the past two. Uh, two out of the past three, I'm sorry. The shot attempts are up in both those games. He took at least 18 or 19 shot attempts, even 11 in the down game against Sacramento, which was an absolute blowout. He's starting to look a little bit more comfortable, and the usage is going his way. He put up 36 DK points on the Lakers earlier in the season. And at 5,600, if I'm not spending up on Randall, it might be him or Kemba Walker. Now, if you're watching Walker's game logs, you'll probably want to throw up in your mouth. Uh, he has not scored in the past two games. He's played 17 minutes over the past two games. He's struggled mightily. But with all that being said, Thibodeau said he's going to continue to rolling with him, and he's going to start in this next game. It's a great matchup. We know that the Lakers give up a ton of points to uh, point guards, and I think he makes for a fantastic GPP in tournament play. Now, a little less safe in cash, for sure. But if you're looking for somebody who a lot of people are going to just hop off, they're going to see those game logs, they're going to be scared to play him. He's a good guy to target. On the Lakers' side of the ball, it's one guy and one guy only, and it's going to be Anthony Davis, a 10-1. I think just continuing to play Davis as long as LeBron's out, he's going to have to will their way to wins. Uh, going against his Knicks front court, which it could be good at times with Mitchell Robinson and Stout, but it's a different story in this go-around. They're going to need as much shot attempts that they can get out of him. He's very safe. He's put up monster games in three out of the past four games. We've seen at least 57 DK points. So at 10K, he's probably the best guy to spend up on, in my opinion, on the slate. And the only other guy worth mentioning would be Malik Monk, but now he's all the way up to 6K. So we're still worth playing. Don't get me wrong but a little less uh, confident. I, the only time I'm playing him is probably using him at the shooting guard position because of the eligibility. He has outperformed that price tag three out of the past four games. Or I'm sorry, yeah, three out of the past four games. So at 6K, you could go that way. He put up 40 in the last one. He put up 57 against Atlanta, and then they put up 26 in Philly. So uh, two out of the past four, but the, the third wasn't too far off. Just not my favorite option, but he's in play. It's only five games. So There's worse you can do. Moving on to the next game. It's a 10 p.m. start time. 
OKC traveling to Sacramento. We'll look at the injury report here. We have OKC on the second half of the back-to-back, so no injury report for them. But Marvin Bagley is questionable. De'Aaron Fox is questionable. Terrence Davis remains out. Uh, we know that for OKC that there is going to be no Jer- Jeremiah Robinson Earl. There's going to be no Shea Gilders Alexander, and there's going to be no Wiggins. Aaron Wiggins looks like he's going to miss a decent amount of time with that sprained ankle. They said it is a serious sprain. So we'll start off here. Lou Dort is the guy I want to talk about at 6,400. I'm going to continue rolling out Dort for as long as he's priced under 7K. It's just that simple. The usage is up. He's taken at least 15 shot attempts over the past four games, uh, and he's been knocking them down at an excellent clip, shooting about almost 50% from three over the past two and then almost about a solid 50% from the field over the past four. So there's no reason to stop playing him. As long as he's going to have this kind of usage and be scoring at this clip, he's going to be paying off a $6,400 salary. We're not scared of Sacramento's defense. In fact, I always try to target shooting guards and wings going against them. So sign me up for Lou Dort. Wouldn't fault you if you want to go to the Giddy at 7600 We haven't seen that Giddy upside game over the past few, uh, but we know that with no Shea, he's going to continue to have the higher usage, and the floor is rock solid. The floor is like right around that 30 DK points, and at 7,600, he can easily get you 36 to 40 pretty easily. So I don't mind Giddy whatsoever. Those are probably the only two guys I'm really interested in. And like I mentioned, we don't have a ton of value. So Trey Mann comes into play at 4,100, has point guard and shooting guard eligibility. He's been playing big minutes over the last two with Wiggins out and with Shea out. He should continue to play 30-plus minutes, and there's worse you can do. So if you're looking for a value play, he's probably one of the guys that you'll hear me talk about. On the Sacramento side of the ball, it's really going to be determined by whether or not De'Aaron Fox is able to suit up. If Fox sits, we're going back to the well with Halliburton here at 84. It's not expensive enough. I talk about it all the time. This guy should be 9K with no Fox. And we haven't seen it really over the past two to three games, but we know he has that 40 to 50 point upside pretty easily. This is a fantastic matchup. He's actually averaging 40 DK points against this team in two games already this season. So sign me up for some Halliburton if Fox sits, and that would open up the path for Mitchell as well. And those are probably the only two guys I really have any interest in. We'll go to the final game of the night, one that's a little less exciting. Nice final game. Same start time, but last one that we'll talk about. Milwaukee Bucks traveling to Portland, taking on the Blazers. As we know, the Blazers do not have an injury report, second half of the back-to-back, but there is no Norman Powell. There is no Robert Covington. There is no Damian Lillard. They're starting to ship out bodies, and there's most likely going to be some more that follow behind it. Uh, and now for the Bucks, George Hill, Brooke Lopez, both ruled out. Everybody else, else is healthy and good to go. 226 and a half game total, eight and a half point spread being favored towards Milwaukee. And I'm actually kind of shocked it's only eight and a half. No one gets the second half of a back to back, and they just traded two of their best wings. We'll start off here with the Bucks. Uh, it's going to be a game script dependent. Now, if you're game scripting it where this game's going to stay close, then a lot of these guys feel like they're great plays. I'd be leaning Bobby Portis. I would be leaning Giannis. If you wanted to go to one of the mid tier guys, 7 9 or 7 5, I wouldn't mind it, but I think there's better mid tier guys, a little bit with safer ceilings and floors overall. So uh, it would probably just be the spend up, and then Bobby Portis is the mid tier play. But I'm not really targeting this game all too much outside of just pure value standpoint. I think there's better studs to stand on. Uh, if I'm a better, I'm probably taking the over. Uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, I'm probably taking the Bucks with the eight and a half pretty easily. I think they can easily blow this team out and just win, and get home, not worry about it. Portland side of the ball, McCollum A2. If you're playing a buck, you're probably going to want to run it back with some firepower, and McCollum might be that guy. For me, I'd rather spend the 8K some other way, like in a Halliburton or some other spots. Um, same thing with Simons. I think 6'6 six, six is a fair price tag for him. They're kind of planning on you know, rebuilding around Simons now. They they like put the saw from them enough where they can start doing a fire sale and trading everybody else. But the value, I guess, that we want to look at would be guys like CJ Ellaby. He drew the start at small forward in that last one. He's min salary at 3K. You could just play him. Even if the game gets out of hand, if it stays close, whatever it is, that's the chalk you're eating right there. It's one of the only concrete, secured value plays that we have where we know he's going to be playing probably about 30-plus minutes, and he's going to be able to get – you know, not crazy shot attempts, but kind of across the board contributing. Uh, decent rebounds, decent assists, chipping a steal or two. We put up 22 and a half DK points last night uh, in 27 minutes. And a 3K, we'll lock that in and feel pretty good about it. Now to the player tier segment where I'll give out two for each because I'm on here by myself. As you guys know, normally it would be one and one. But anytime, we're, we're still trying to keep the content the same. So well, it'll be two plays each for each tier. The expensive tier is going to be Anthony Davis and Jimmy Butler. I talked about both those guys plenty of times. I think they're both rock-solid rock concrete. Jimmy Butler, don't love that price tag for him. I'd rather him be around that 8 9 or 9 k But that matchup allows me to pay up on him. Um, I would have probably swapped in Halliburton if we saw that Fox is out. But we don't have Fox news yet, so we got to keep an eye on it. And he should be returning fairly soon. 
For the mid-tier, we got a couple plays here. Lou Gensador at 6,400. I think he's been my mid-tier play for the past three podcasts. Uh, and he will continue to be my mid-tier play as long as he's uh, listed under 7K. So no issues going to Lou Gensador. I think he's a rock-solid concrete value play. You could sw- swap and giddy there, but I like the discount that we're getting on Dort. And then I'll say DeAndre 8 and a 7-1. I do like this matchup for him. Uh, I'm always worried about the game total ever so slightly, but... I think, yeah, even if he gets 25 minutes, he can easily pay off that 7-1 price tag. There's no worries there. And then for the value, CJ Ellaby, 3K, absolutely. Sign me up. I'm good with it. Uh, there's no way that this dude doesn't give us a 5X return. Uh, there's, I can't imagine that he gets 50, less than 15 DK points. I would actually be leaning more towards 20 to 25 pretty comfortably. And then if I'm looking at somebody else over there, I'm willing to take a stab at Kemba. A good bounce back spot. I like him against the Lakers. They're going to need to get him some run out there. I don't think he'll be higher owned at all. It's a little risky. Now, LB's the safe guy. Kemba Walker's the risky guy. But maybe playing one Nick, whether it's Kemba, whether it's Fournier or Randall, to run it back against Davis makes sense. It's just going to depend on your build and who you're spending up on. If you're not spending up on Jimmy, uh, you could probably look to a guy like Randall. But my goal is to have Davis, one of those other studs, and then try to squeeze in Halliburton if we have the Fox News. Now, if we don't have the Fox News, I might opt to not squeeze in Halliburton. I might leave myself open to, you know, some swaps if possible. But the value is okay with Ellaby. We have the 3K value there. If we're playing Kemba, it's okay to get him at 41. That opens up a little bit more value. And then there's some decent mid-tier plays that we've talked about that I think we can go back to the well on. Now, that brings home everything. But as you know, we're always out here giving out some Thrive picks uh, at the end of each show because they are a wonderful sponsor to the show. And they are the best daily prop and fantasy sports site out there. So, Take advantage of it while you could. Now, I will go to a few decent options available on the slate, but we're trying to find one that's going to give us a decent return in, on the value. Uh, if I'm probably going to go anywhere, I'm, I'm going to keep it with Lou Jens Dort. I think I think at 19 and a half points, it's the over is 110. Now, it's obviously a risky bet, but that's a that's a pretty confident over. And you can even pair it with a Josh Giddy 30 and a half rebounds, points, and assists. I think he's got a good chance to triple double in this spot. I like both those guys. If I'm leaning anywhere, that's where it would be. And if we have the Fox News, don't be afraid to pair it with a Halliburton at 27 and a half points total for points, rebounds, and assists as well. That is an even cool 100. Now, if you want, follow me on Twitter. I do appreciate it. At Mike Patria, M I K E A P O T R I A. Show your love and support and give the th- uh, thumbs up, five star. Subscribe to the podcast. It means the world to us over here, guys. You can find it on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever you name it, you can find it. And then we will be back tomorrow by we, I mean, Santino. He'll be on here breaking down this wonderful Sunday slate for you guys. He'll have all the action for you. As always, thank you for listening. Take care. And let's go take down a tournament. I think we've been getting close over the past few nights, but let's take one down. Can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just $5.99 each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand toss pizza and a marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, go! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's too, where you can. Mix and match two or more. $5.99 each at Domino's. Two item minimum pan pizza, bone, and wings, and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary.